Great form, Jack. Great form, buddy. Welcome back to the Wells Farm. Deer season is over and now it's our favorite time of the year. Find the antlers. It's like finding a needle in a haystack, but you kind of know where to look. The food plots, outside of the food plots, bedding areas. We just started on our first location and it's pretty big. We got a fog too, which is kind of a pain in the hiney, but we got Jack behind the camera looking, myself looking. Little Jack gonna be running off. You know, you're gonna probably hear me screaming at him a couple times. And then my mom's in the truck to my left, to your right. And so we got a squad out here looking for sheds. And we're gonna see if we can find Big Louie from 2023. And I'm wearing my go-to Barstool Outdoors hoodie. You can get it at store.barstoolsports.com slash outdoors. Snaggy one. <laughs> There's usually always some in this area and we haven't found a single one. So I don't know if we suck or, or what's going on, but we must be doing a really crappy job. Typically when you shed hunt, it's not gonna just take a day. You gotta take like a couple of days to really like search through the area. You gotta kind of go back and forth. On my Onyx, I actually track where I've been and where I haven't. So I can literally just do like parallel lines from each other, just zigzag throughout the property. Jack, you got a battle wound. Come here, come here. Hey, heal. Okay, sit, sit, look at his ear. He's a baby, what happened, buddy? All right, let's go get some antlers, Jack. Oh, I don't know, it's like eating up, but you can see where his hook, I mean, you can see his hand on his hook, so just come here. All right, I'm just scanning this area. All right, bye. 11 pointer dead. Oh my gosh, that sucks. So this is our family farm that we're on. We have a couple of different areas with um, like smaller. Oh my gosh, I got my big buck this year on a 200 acre piece. And it's usually the Hail Mary. It's like they have to come get food. So we held a lot of the food this year. That's when they would come late season. Obviously like we sit in it too during the rut, just hoping that a doe comes out and then a buck follows. This is like our family property where my grandpa lives. It was a place that like really is near and dear to my heart that I want to pass down to my kids as well. And so when we have a deer die, whenever we have deer die, it's really sad. It's hard because we like treat them like family this time. Yes, we're trying to hunt them, but we tend and we grow so many food plots and we watch them grow up to become old and wise and big. Seeing this is like really hard on us. It sucks. Wow. He looks young. He was gonna be big. I mean, it's hard telling how big he was or how old he was, but I mean, by his frame, I think he was maybe a four year old, but I don't know, you can, I don't really tell, I can't really tell. Obviously he's completely eaten, he's been dead for a while. You don't know if he's gotten hit by a car or by the highway, so that could have been a thing. He could have ran right over here and died. He's not by water, so that's good. His, he's not really like, I can't really tell. You can't see if there's any bullet wounds or arrows you got to get a uh, certain tag from the game warden so we can't legally like break the head off and bring them with us also you're not supposed to because if you do that you could also get they have like viruses and bacteria that you can breathe in and you can get really sick so don't recommend doing that he's a true one two three four five six seven eight nine ten pointer this is not how you want to find a dead deer the coyotes definitely drug him that's where he died see they had a heyday with him dog eat dog world Jack and I have officially separated, so we're going GoPro style. I think he's going to regret not coming with me because I feel like I'm gonna find one over here. All right, guys, if you don't know, I'm Sid's producer. Sid thinks she's a big time deer hunter or something like that. She doesn't even really kill big bucks, but I'm out here going down to this river bottom. I'm finding the big racks today. She thinks she's all that killing big deer. Today is my day to shine. I think I'm a winner. I don't think we're a bunch of losers, unless I'm good, ready to come up to this antler. That's not an antler, nope. It's an antler! Woohoo! That's what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, I think it's another side over there. We're not a bunch of smucks. Look at that guy, six pointer. Okay, Jack gave me Jack gave me a dead GoPro, but I found an antler and I'm pretty sure I found another one. So now we are resorting to my phone. Yep, 
there's an antler. Do you see it? It's right there. Oh, right there. It looks like it's been eaten maybe from a squirrel. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Let's go. Number two. And they're definitely not a pair, I don't think. I'm going to put these two next to each other. They're not a pair, so check this out. Two different antlers, two different sizes, two different ages. This guy um, has been whitewashed. I don't know. This might be an older antler. Or he just dropped early because he's been gnawed on. You can check too. It's a nice base. Let's go! What's up, doggy dog? All right, not a matching set because the same side, but this guy got the squirrel. Squirrel has taken an advantage of him already. He's been kind of sunbathing a little bit. And then a six pointer. The guy has some pretty good bases though. Young deer, nice bases. This guy looks like he's gonna be good. They both have some mass to him too. Did you find any? Zero. Oh. See, Jack just wanders off and I was like, you should probably come with me, but let him do his thing. Eagle I got cat. two. And I got two. What the hell? It's a joke. He's older. He's not from this year, it looks like. At least I don't think, no, I don't think he's from this year. Always find dead heads. Oh. Let's go. Jack! Found one! Oh my gosh. Check this guy out. 12 pointer. And I think this is the same deer that we've actually had on trail camera. Where we're at right now, if you just kind of go over the ridge behind the cabin there, it's called the Oasis, where we actually looked earlier. And this is the deer that I was looking for, is a 12 pointer. Um, we let him pass, and it looks like it's, he's pretty fresh because there's a little bit of blood. A little bit of blood still. So he's, he's semi fresh, and we found him before the squirrels did. But this is exciting because now we know he survived, he dropped his antlers unless something crazy happens, but he survived for all we know. And this is gonna be a really nice steer. <sighs> Heck yeah, dude. That's fine. And we got three, my mom found one. She thinks she found the other side to him too. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I literally saw it from the car, from the truck. I'm like, all I see is this piece. Cause everything else is in the, the like the brush. He's been chewed on by a squirrel. And I was like, you know what? I just gotta go out for a peace of mind. Eight point, or no, it will be a 10 with brows. <laughs> That's the best type of uh, shed hunting is when you can actually spot him from the truck and you don't have to get out. So now keep an eye out, Jack, because we can easily find another one. They're just bedded on this ridge in the thick stuff. So when you go shed hunting, the most important places to look are like fence lines. So if they're jumping over something, that's when they could fall off. Food plots, so when they're down and eating. Water sources are a good spot too if they're drinking water. And then bedding areas. And usually they're going to bed, especially when they lose their antlers, they're going to bed around the food source. Did you find one? Yeah, All right, come on. She thinks she found one. I think I know what you're talking about over there. The Easter egg hunt is on. <laughs> you think it's over there? Yeah. I don't know if that's actually an antler. I think so. All right, let's go find out. Okay. Let's do it. I feel like it's not. Yeah, $100. Fox? All right. $10? No. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Wait, okay, she's right. She's definitely right. That's an antler. Jack, can you see it? I think I see one. I see the G2s and the G3s sticking up from the grass. Big deer guy here. That's a oh. good spot. I'm not cut out for this, folks. I've been going after this all day. Haven't found one. Let's uh, cut this for social right now. Oh my gosh! Look at this! It's huge! Louie! 
All right, guys, been after it all day right now. Carrie did not help us out with this. Spotted it from the truck with my own eyes. I'm really starting to get the hang of this. I think I'm gonna become a full-time shed hunter, get Instagram famous, become more famous than Sydney Wells, start my own show, kill big bulls, or kill big bucks. Kill big bulls. Kill big bulls. But I found a matching set right next to each other. This is what we were just talking about. This is the best kind of find is when you find both sides and they're right next to each other. And I was about to say, all right, let's turn around. But then I was like, let's just cut through. It looks like they were literally placed there. Wow. Is that not insane? I, like that looks like they were placed right there. They weren't for everybody who's gonna say, oh, they probably weren't. No, they weren't. Dude, that's literally awesome. Isn't that sick? Little Louie, nice little eight point. Nuts. Nux, brother. That's a giant. I know. Look at that. The beam. It's a mass. The mass. This one's a dandy too. Yeah, he's gonna be nice. He's young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's squirrels were getting at him, but dropped him a while ago, so not bad. We're back at the lodge. Best way to break in our lodge is with the solo stove. So we're checking out the antlers. We have literally been shed hunting all day, got ourselves some dinner, came back um, just to hang out at the new lodge. Most important part is to remove the flame ring, which is right on top. See where it's kind of curving in. You remove the flame ring and you go ahead and start your fire. I got my kindling in there. I got my wood that I got from solo stove. So that was very convenient. I actually didn't have to go um, buy wood myself or chop it up. So so we got the wood from Solo Stove and then we put the ring right back on which is optimal for the flames and to keep it out of the wind. So this Solo Stove is awesome. I highly recommend it's also portable which is really nice because we like to have fires everywhere not just the lodge so I just throw it in the back of my pickup truck and I also have a griddle that I can put on the Solo Stove to cook some eggs and bacon after a long hunt. So I'm really excited to use this during deer season and duck season because this is where I'm going to be staying the majority of the time. All right, enough with the solo stove. Today was awesome, okay? We found, I think, 10 sheds, three dead heads, which kind of stinks, but check these out. I want you guys to get a good look at this. This guy is a 12 pointer that we are familiar with. He's got some really nice bases and he's kind of gnarly on his brow tines too. But this is a deer that we passed this year. He's a 12 pointer and we're like, okay, he's a little too young. We want to go ahead and let him survive. So it feels really good to find his sheds after um, going through some of the brutal winter weather here in Illinois. So we got this 12 pointer. This was a nice surprise. I've never seen this deer and he has some mass. Holy mass, a butte. Um, look at those bases. His brow tines curving in. He's a really unique deer. Um, so an eight pointer has G2 split, but the mass is what is making me pretty excited about this deer. And then we found a bunch of other deer. We found, we found some sets. We got this guy, squirrel beat us to him. A lot of little Louis, a lot of up and comers that are going to be nice deer to harvest on the Wells farm. As long as they make it, we're praying they make it. And then this is the one that I think I'm most excited about. Ah, <sighs> this beauty. He is going to be awesome next year. We have hoped to find his shed. We've only found one side, so we're really hoping to find his next. But look at all those splits. A true stud of a buck. He showed up the very end of season when the cold weather finally hit and he was starving. He was ready to come out and show himself. He's a, a nice mature deer, but I think another year is gonna make him absolutely blow up. And we saw him a couple times on trail cameras, but we could never get him. And um, I'm pretty excited to see that he survived. We're just hoping that he shows himself next year. This is a time of the year where it's kind of early for shed hunting, but they will find them and we're trying to find them before others do. So we found our first round, which is really nice and pretty exciting, especially some deer that we've been after but they haven't all dropped yet. Jack and I were driving to the farm and we actually saw two bucks jump the fence onto the, uh, the neighbor's property. One had both sides and the other one had only one side, so he dropped one. It's time to start looking, but you're not gonna see all your deer drop them until probably the end of February. So I'll be back, probably still hanging around the solo stove. My next mission is to come stay at this lodge that finally got done, have some friends over, chill by the solo stove, and hopefully wake up in the morning 
maybe make some eggs and bacon, have some coffee, and go shed hunting again before uh, the season's over. But exciting day, great day. Mom, me, Jack, and Jack, little and big Jack. Big Louie is lurking somewhere. And this time, without any antlers. So I'm already obsessed. I'm ready for 2024 to get here already. But make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Hope you like this video. And we'll see you next time in Barcelona Outdoors.